Hello, every pony, and welcome back to Fandom Fridays, where we proceed to check out all the fanfics that are not pony related. Why? Because we're doing another Power Racer story! Yeah. I'm getting addicted to this fic, and you people are going to have to suffer with me. Not that that's a bad thing. This story has been pretty dang good so far, and I'll tell you how I'm kind of curious to see where this next part goes. Speaking of which, a uh, special shout out to the Luniverse section of this show, where apparently somebody has done a Power Rangers as fic with ponies. And as I keep pointing out on the Starfleet things, it is possible to do this. You just need to know what you're doing. And this guy knows what he's doing. So, without further ado, please enjoy us as we here at the Three Berry Memorial Library are proud to present Power Rangers of Guardians of Gaia Season 1, Chapter 5! Second guessing, second best. Enjoy. Power Rangers, Guardians of Gaia, Season 1. By. J. Phillips. Chapter 5. Despite the fact that there were only five recorded Guardians of Gaia, each with their own sword, there seems to be a number of historical documents and finds related to Gaia and the swords, discussing that there were more creatures among them than just five. The Phoenix, Hippogriff, Leviathan, Behemoth, and Thunderbird. This seems to suggest the existence of more than five Gaia swords. Did they work as secondary partners to the Guardians? Perhaps they had their own guardian partners that were destroyed prior. And how, exactly, did they assist the team? Oh boy, Ox Swords! I certainly do love those when they show up. They can be quite fun, especially when you get to have all the different combinations. My only problem is, when it comes to owning the toys of the Ox Swords, placing them onto your shelf to display because hard as heck, especially when you have something like, say, oh, I don't know, Engine OG-12. Swear the size of that sucker. A few yards off the shore, a group of a couple dozen blots were dragging a pair of large cages hooked to iron chains. Inside the cages were a group of merfolk, unable to try and escape, and finding themselves overheating outside the much cooler lake they had been in previously. Unfortunately, these blots had caught them off guard while enjoying a nice day's swim to the surface. With no weapons to protect themselves with, they were critically incapacitated enough to be put in cages. As the cages were dragged into the woods, one merman with red spiky hair reached up to the lock, keeping his group's cage locked. It was far too slow, quickly caught by a blot. The dark creature grabbed a hold of the merman's wrist tightly, causing it to cry out in pain. Only for his attempts to instead be called towards the blot's other claw, which was raised up overhead, looking down to come upon him. Before he could, though, the blot's head was slammed into the iron bars of its cage, causing it to release the merman, then was holed off by a figure in red and black clothes. A human girl, no doubt one of the guardians of Gaia. Heads up, blots! Nikki shouted before pulling out her blaster and shooting down another pair of blots. The sister rest turned their attention on her, though. Patrick dove down for the trees, wrapping his legs around one and flipping it into two more. As the two went to work fighting against the blots, Madeline leaped down from the cage, kicking the blots closer to it in their eyes, destroying them. Hey, I thought we agreed I would get the signal! Madeline whined, drawing her blaster and firing away more blots. Actually, I'm very certain that you could cut us off before we could say nay! Patrick shouted back. Every one of the other canes is swinging up on the roof, kicking a blind away in the process. Besides, couldn't wait for a signal this time! Nikki noted, chopping a blind in the neck before flip-kicking it into a tree. She landed perfectly onto her feet, raising her communicator to her face, and placing a blue gym. T1 to T2, what's your status? I would also like to announce that I am currently holding the official Power Rangers Legacy Communicator. This baby is beautiful! Lila ducked behind a wooden crate, avoiding nail shots from the blots onto the docks she and Dirk were on. As her compatriot hurled one blot off the docks and into the bay, she held up a communicator and replied, Could be better! We definitely got their attention! Why the heck are they even attacking this place anyway? Dirk demanded, pulling up a blot as the shield fired more nutshots. 
One of these crates are so important! Food for the dumb villains he's been attacking! Lila yelled, drawing her blaster and shooting down some blots. They're trying to wear their defenders down by starving them! Dirk's eyes arrow night. They're all there going, Oh, that's just cheap! Without warning, Dirk immediately grabbed hold of the wooden railing around the docks and pried to clean off. Charging the group of his new battering ram. Leo could only watch in amazement, and a little bit of fear Stark proceeded to wail on the blots in rather angry fashion. Beating him all down with a stick, and knocking them all into the bay. Okay, starting to make progress. Leo muttered to her communicator. Let me eat back at the base once we finish cleaning these guys up. Gotcha! Nikki replied, crane kicking a blot in the eye, and watching us, another squad came charging in. Let's wrap this up, you guys! It's more for time! Patrick and Madeline nodded as the three pulled their crystals from their chains, and turned into the crystal blast morphers. As more blocks turned in, the pull tailed their triggers, yelling, Guardians of Wet Gaia! Awaken! The red green violet blast launched forward, knocking a few blocks back, before spiraling around and coating the three with energy, the rangers just materializing. Hate Samus! The green red ranger yelled, bringing out her twin swords as she ran in and cut a pair of blots down immediately. The slow blots! The green ranger cried, summoning his lance as he drove in, not getting his three blots down in a single swing. Lightning daggers! The violet ranger shied, pulling out her daggers and stabbing them into a pair of blots, destroying them. With most of the blots gone, the rest of the group formed up, talking to Tarsus III. Melon is serving with exasperation. <sighs> Don't these guys ever quit? Honey, they're mooks. Mooks don't quit. Nope, and now you do me. Nikki commented, Gaia Samus! This command, all three drew their short swords and inserted the crystals into them, causing them to glow in their respective colors. Twinkle, let the slash! The three rangers slashed their Gaia Savers forward, sending elemental slashes out that flew straight through the horde of blots. Creatures fell to the ground in a small explosion of dark mist. Nikki let herself smile a little, relieved that they were gone. Alright, now let's get these merfolk to a safe zone, Nikki said to the two, before turning her attention to send merfolk, cutting apart the locks of the cases. Everyone, it's gonna be alright. We're gonna transfer you to an unseen kingdom south of here. The blood don't know exists. You might not be able to leave as often as you like, but you'll be safe there. The merfolk looked all to each other, some a bit more concerned and untrusting than others. But after a few moments, all nodded to Nikki, who raised her communicator up. Delwar, blame for transport! Madeline grumbled, rubbing her arm. Man, why does she always have to call the shots? I was the leader way before she showed up. Lila shoved the crane into a blot, knocking it over onto the side of the docks, only to see more on the way. Just when I was feeling good about actually kicking one's butt! Well, plenty of butts to kick now! Dark insisted with a smirk. It's morphin' time! The two pulled their crystals from their chains and inserted their morphers, pulling the triggers and yelling, Guardians of Gaia! Waken! The beams of blue and orange shot out, taking down a pair of blots. They turned back around and coated the two with energy. The ranger suits coming on. Quick axe! Orange ranger yelled, bringing his axe down onto the wooden floor of the docks, setting a small tremor that took it through the blocks hard. Flight launcher! Blue Ranger shot as he brought out her can, opening fire and sending wave sheet blasts of energy that destroyed most of the blocks. The rest of the being knocked clear out of the docks so the beasts were built off. Let's finish them off! Gaia save us! Lila and Dark drew their short swords, inserting their crystals into the hills, and sending blue and orange lights through the blades. Double Metal Slash! The two rangers swung their Gaia Savers hard, sending a pair of elemental slices that cut through the remaining blots, sending the creatures to the sand before evaporating into dark mist. Lila gave a hard sigh, exhausted. She felt Dark put a hand onto her shoulder, giving her a thumbs up. It did good back there. Dark complimented, you're getting stronger all the time. Lila blessed and smiled under her helmet, giving the Yarn Ranger a faithful punch to the shoulder. <laughs> Thanks, Dark. Let's get back to base. Madeline plopped down into a comfy chair in the main chamber of the ancient library, exhausted. Ah, don't you always love it when command stairs have comfy chairs or comfy seating arrangements? Zoron! I mean, it's just so much nicer when a command center has a 
you know, nice place to rest for our rangers when they're seen to be given the information. Zordon! I'm sorry, it's just that the command center, as awesome and iconic as it is, doesn't really have any uh, sitting places. She didn't even bother to demorph, instead removing her helmet. Um, a little side note, I always do love it when Rangers take their helmets off. I think it was Lee Kara who said it best when he said, it, helped us it helps convince us that there's actually somebody in the suit when they morph. And I kind of have to agree. When I see the Rangers walking around without their helmet, when I see a Ranger do a helmetless scene, it does kind of help maintain the illusion. I mean, I do know that when the Ranger morphs, the suit actor takes place, and they either have, A, the normal suits that are just meant for walking around and doing poses, and the hero suits. But still, without the helmet, now I can actually think, okay, so this are these are the Rangers that are fighting, these are the characters that are doing their jobs. Not like that, but it's just cool to see it click off. Although, if you ask me, they take their helmets off way too easy. I own a Gokai red helmet, and that sucker is not easy to put on. Looking ahead, Nikki and Patrick were similarly in their Ranger suits. Their helmets pulled off. Both look to fit Tucker down as well, but we're doing a better job of hiding it. Within moments, Dirk and Lila is teleporting into the main chamber. Also taking off their helmets. Lila wiping the slip from her forehead. Zohar immediately entered her room with a bowl of cool water and some cloths. Man, the bots have been everywhere lately! Lila exclaimed from the back of her neck. This is the ninth attack this week! It's a good thing you make these communicators, so we can split up and take multiple threats at once. Nikki noted, getting one of the wasps across from Jawar. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a serious problem if Walker and Darkia start setting lights. Well, Dirk brought up, taking a seat. Patrick ran ahead to his red hair. Come to think of it, they haven't sent a single lights list since the aunt. That was three days ago. Jawar nodded, stroking his beard. <laughs> yes, I noticed. They're up to something. I'm certain of it. Mala's eyes perked up. Oh, hey, Nikki! Tell them what the merfolk gave us for saving them! Nicky blinked before snapping his fingers, having forgotten. Oh, but, here! We see her open a palm out. The Red Ranger revealed the item Madeline was referring to. Knock on the ring crystal. Looking to be the same shape and size as the primary crystals. As she held it out, the Rangers couldn't help but feel like they could hear the sound of the ocean echoing off the walls of the main chamber. Whoa, a new crystal? Dirk demanded. They say you found it during mining on the ocean floor one day. Nikki explained, passing the crystal to Jawar. What do you think? It's most certainly genuine. Jawar confirmed, closing his eyes and reading the crystal's energy. I could sense great power coming from it. So, what do you think it does? Patrick wondered. Malik grinned, speaking out of her tear. Why don't we put it in one of our swords and test it out? Patrick spun around and faced her, looking shocked. Are you nuts? We can't just go using an under crystal without knowing what it does. You could at least approximate a bomb attack or something for all you know. No way! Now it's got. Hey, I thought I heard the ocean before. Maybe it's tied to the wire element. In that case, maybe Layla could try and figure it out? Might be a good idea if we do more research on it. Layla suggested. I mean, if it is a genuine guy in crystal. There's probably a book here somewhere that says what it does, right? Jawar nodded. Absolutely. It says Madeline is the most keen on learning about it. She could help me look for the information. Sounds like a plan, Nikki said. Well, you guys do that. I'll be keeping an eye on the viewing club. In case Walker or Darkia try to do anything while you guys are busy. Darkia growled, turning away from the black face of the fireplace. Bust it, Walker! They stopped two more of our operations. Are you just gonna- Darkia stopped, staring at her brother as he was turned away. Facing him was a dark blue furred lightless, almost resembling a goblin mixed with an ape. It was holding its paws to either side of Walker's head, its eyes rolling back into the skull. Okay, I'm just going to assume you two are having a much deeper conversation than it looks. Darkia asked, confused. 
The Satorian likeness has the ability to read minds. Walker explained, I'm transferring my photographic memory of the ranger's fighting skills and weapons over to him. Of course, it's a lengthy procedure. You mean the passing attacks for diversions? Dekir inquired. As well as the means to wear them out a bit. Walker added, leaving nothing to chance with this one. Well, haven't you thought of everything? Darkie Asilo sneered. Walker smirked evilly. I'm through playing around with the ranger's sister. I cannot allow them to grow any more powerful. This battle ends now. Darkie drew her sword, recently appeared from her last bell. Just save it some of them for me, dear brother. I want a little payback on them for the last time. Madeline moaned, closing another of the Lord's books and placing it atop the piles he had already read through. Her and Jarwar had been at this for two hours, and still were no closer to finding out what the crystal did. Meanwhile, Layla and Patrick were taking the opportunity to take a short nap. Dirk was having lunch, and Nikki was still watching the viewing glow. Madeline's soldiers slumped as she watched Nikki. Man, look at her. Ending all awesome by keeping a constant fizzle over Gaia, like she was Batman or something. Why does he always have to make it look so easy being the leader? Why does everyone look at her like the head honcho instead of me? I put the group together! Modern. So we're asked, stabbing the violet and pink string blonde out of her train of thought. Is everything all right? Madeline sighed, turning back to the books. Jower, you ever tried to do something? Then have someone else swoop in and be buried than you in every conceivable way possible? So I thought for a moment, stroking his beard. Well, I'm the last of the wizards. And being a wizard's all I've ever tried to be. Well, except maybe for a partner. But no, I can't see her half. Still, I can imagine that would be difficult. Madeline laid her hand on her arms. Jawa peering over at Nikki and suddenly get the idea. Oh, I think I understand now. I'm still feeling envious of Nikki. Because she's the leader of the Guardians of Gaia. Look, it's not like I don't like her or anything, Madeline went on. It's just frustrating sometimes. I was the one in charge of this group before she came along. If my understanding of the situation is correct, you literally dragged her kicking and screaming into your group. Show her carrying in a rather dead pan tone. Yeah, okay, but still, couldn't she at least put me in charge of group too? Madeline complained. So I could look after my little sister while she was taking out my buds of blots without the whole team back her up? Madeline, I don't know why Nikki selected the team she did. Tara explained. But I do know this. She had a reason. In the meantime, the rest of the team does things up some doofus with no good plans whatsoever. Madeline muttered, looking depressed. Guys, we got trouble! Nikki called over, just before the alarms went off. Buds are attacking a beast himself! Mano and Jawar immediately put down the books, running over to sea. After a few moments, Lila, Patrick, and Dirk joined up with them. This is the feeling called sold in on Southern Breeze. Guyans of various species were running in terror of the blots, led by a lightless or resembling of some overgrown ape of some sort. A monkey? Lila asked. They really are running out of ideas. Hey! Sometimes monkeys can be very cool on Sentai. Especially Bosco's poor little ape that he killed. And this is why Bosco's an a-hole. That isn't a monkey, so I corrected. That is a Satori likeness. And Satori is Japanese for monkey, so it's a monkey likeness. It's a fearsome monster, and that's the inability to read minds. Be careful, Guardians. I have a feeling this may be some sort of trap. Got it! Nikki replied with a nod. The group all lifted their helmets overhead. Back to action! I mean, seriously. They take off their helmets. Boom! Their hair is out. Do you know what normally is required for putting on a ranger helmet? You gotta put on this little white hood thing, put all your hair in there, and then you put on the ranger helmet. The Violet Ranger drew her daggers and immediately heard them out. Gustav is right. It is a trap. Yeah, trap this! Malin shouted as he stepped forward, pressing her buckle. Lightning daggers! Chains of electricity connected them over her hands as he flew out towards the Satoria Lightless. 
However, long before they could make contact, the monster leaped over them, laying the daggers fry a pair of blocks before it dropped King Malcolm down to the sand with a surprise yelp. Cause the blast both of us! Nikki ordered, the team drawing their blasters as Madeline lay in the dirt. The group opened fire in the lightless, who dodged long before they drew their weapons. The blocks around the gang shot down as it ducked the weeds around them. Meanwhile, the blocks behind the rangers tried to get into sneak attacks, firing nail shots that knocked the rangers off their feet, only get blown down their cells. Ugh, stole my lots! Patrick called out, pulling his weapon and stamming down the sand. Then he looked up and kicked off the blocks charging toward him. Eventually, essentially spinning his lance, creating a green tornado that knocked down more blocks. All the while, other rangers backed off. After a while, he flipped up, pulled the lance out, then slammed back down, setting up a whirlwind that took out most of the blocks leaving only a dozen left along with the monster. Let's wipe him out! Nikki commanded, the group aiming their blasters at the last of their enemies. Quick double blast! blast! The rangers yelled, releasing a combined blast of their five elements on the blots. Unfortunately, just before they hit, the Satori light was flipped up, sprung off a pair of the blots' shoulders, and practically flew over the blast as it fried its compatriots, then slashed the rangers one after the other as it came down on the beach again, sending a tumbling across the sand. Ugh! Oh, God. I am still worn down for the last few flights, Patrick moaned. I can't take so much more of this. Take it. What gives? Dirk demanded. It's like he knows every move we'll make before we do. That's because he does, you fool. The rangers looked over at the source of the voice. None other than Walker, making his way along the beach with staff in hand. His sister, Darkie, up by his side. The two just laughed mockingly as it dumb as they came closer. Darkie are drawing her sword as they prepared for battle. I committed every one of your skills, abilities, and tactics to memory, then had the Satori Lightless copy it all from my mind. Walker explained, Now, it will be the ultimate instrument of your destruction, and we'll be here to take as many scraps as we can for ourselves. And I plan on taking the biggest scrap possible! Darkia adds, smirking. Yeah, SCRAP THIS! Darkia added, QUICK AXE! With a roar, the orange ranger slammed his axe to the ground, sending a small quake through it that blast, shot up a sandstorm after the original duo. Walker and Darkie had left over it, only for Layla and Patrick to meet him in the air, classic weapons at them. Heat Sabers! Nikki yelled, drawing her twin blades and slashing at the Satori Lightless, only for it to deflect them with his own claws and drop kick the ranger in the chest, knocking her down. Double Metal Blast! Madeline screamed, firing hers and Nikki's blasters to the Satori Lightless, only for her to slash straight through them to her, sending her ceiling back with sparks flying off her suit. Oh, this thing knows how to carry her every move! It would not have 100%, so we just can't power through! Nikki groaned, getting back to her feet. Madeline, I need suggestions! I... huh? Madeline stammered, Dossie doesn't try to avoid a kick to the face, scrambling over to the Red Ranger. It knows every strategy I can think of, Natalie explained. We need something different, and you're the only one who can pull it off. Since when have you ever thought I was any good to you in the field? Madeline asked. The two leaping to their left as the Tory Lightless fired beams from their eyes that tore through the sand. The girls ran to the trees, hoping to find some color. Hmm. Not every day uh, you see a girl being the lancer. What are you talking about? Nikki inquired. I've always valued your skills in combat. Yeah, like a Thor! Malin countered, not paying attention as the story lightless or it's closer to your position. Well, you wouldn't even let me lead Team 2 to cover my sister? Is that what you think that was? Nikki demanded. That I was dissing you? If that wasn't it, then what was it? Malin shouted, getting to her lawyer's face. Only for the treaty or duck behind gets slashed in half by the story lightless, causing it to scramble. Lila and Dirk were capable of handling the ducks! Nagy ran his eyes. Back away from the lightless constantly where our hate savers drawn. But Patrick and I needed the third razor of Team 1 if we were going to make the rescue work. Melon's jaw nearly crashed her face her mouthpiece. You mean you. You idiot, Madeline! The violent razor cursed herself. Why couldn't you get over yourself and figure it out before? She selected the teens the way she did because she needed you! Melon sat down, but just as the two found themselves leaping up into the trees to avoid more laser fire from the Zatori lightless's eyes. But, what if my ideas don't work? I can never think them out like you do. 
And I can never just say what's on my mind like you do, Nikki Coward. I'm constantly overthinking every move I make, just to make sure it's right. But you always say whatever you think is the way to go. So if you got an idea, just do it! Mal is shocked, completely unprepared for such an admittance. As a result, the two were easily caught off guard as the Satori Lightless cut through the trees they were hiding in, sending him crashing into the ground below. Mal had grown in pain, trying to get to her feet. Once he has the monster pirate up his ice beams again, Thinking fast, she pressed the thumb to her buckle, calling forth the aquamarine guy and crystal, and blowing into a blaster. This is the lightless fired his blasters, she pulled the trigger, to her amazement, and launched a series of aquamarine colored beams to generate a shell like shield, reflecting the monster's attacks and right back into its own eyes. It howled as it stumbled backwards, its eyes shut tight as the black smoke came from its eyelids. Nice going, Madeline! Nikki complimented, patting her shoulder. Told you you could get it done! <laughs> Just Patrick helps me, the pilot ranger muttered. It wasn't a bomb! No, but that would be cool. And how many times have we had bombs on a ranger series? Nikki giggled a little, before turning her attention to the Centauri Lightless, who was stumbling around, slashing trees down in his blindness. Having Madeline to defeat, the two charged the monster with their last gas, Madeline throwing a pair of fists at her jaw before holding her arms out. Letting Nikki spring off her shoulders and bring her sabers down on the monster, knocking her clear out of the woods and back onto the beach where the others were fighting. At least this explains how a ranger goes from point A to point B at a distance! What? That annoys me. People complain about so much stuff on Power Rangers, but they never complain about how a Sentai is in a warehouse section in one scene, they leap up. Do a kick, and the next thing you know, they're in a forest! Alright, they got him! Lila cheered, her sword pushing against Walker's staff. Knew they could do it! Dark shouted, locking his axe for a darkest sword and then hitting her in a gut with one end. Double to the metal sauce! Patrick called, swinging his and Galia's sky saber, knocking Darkie and Walker back several feet. Darkie has survived the situation. Seeing the red violet rangers emerge from the woods. This isn't going according to plan! <laughs> Luckily, I always have a backup. Walker growled, raising his staff. Stark staff of Wyvern. Make my monster grow! Wyvern on Walker's staff open. When you see a steam of black flames that shines as Satori Lightless's body. He quickly got back to his feet, growling as it was filled with power, growing into a giant. Walker gave the rangers one last sneer as he opened the portal below himself and his sister. The two disappearing into it as the team got some distance from the now giant lightless. His eyes opening as he were fully healed. We need guys who are powered now! The rangers yelled, inserting the crystals of the guy's sabers and raising them into the sky. The sabers sent out five streams of light all around, and within moments, the guy's swords came roaring in. The team jumped up to the air. Caught by beams of emanating from the swords that teleported them into the cockpits. Guys, swords combine! Nikki yorted, the team switching their crystals to unity crystals. The swords immediately got to the air, shifting their bodies around before connecting. The team's cockpits coming together to their giant robot's head. Guy and Megazord, power up! The Power Rangers called as the Megazord came to life. So the Tory Lightless roared at the robot, quickly running in to trade fists and cause with it. For a while, the two giants seemed evenly matched, but when the Zord went for a roundhouse kit, the monster duck had swung both feet out at the leg the Megazord was standing on, causing it to crash backwards. Ugh! Dirk yelled as the team was nearly thrown out of their seats. That thing's got the Megazord's moves memorized too! As the Tory Lightless growled as it lifted in the air, we need to bring both claws into the Megazord, only for it to spread its wings and swoop out of the way, take it to the sky. It quickly doubled around to counterattack. The power of its five swords flowing into its vis, since he ended up with fire and lightning. Star punch! The five shouted. The guy and Megasaur flying in closer. However, before they could make their move, the story lightless did a backflip, swiping the claws on his hands and his feet across the Megasaur, it causing it to crash and tumble into the water before the lake. I'll take it! Now what do we do? Patrick asked. One more hit like that one was through. Madeline, try to do Crystal again, Nikki suggested. See this once, it might be able to do it again. Well, better than losing outright, Madeline admitted, wanting to Crystal into her plugged-in blaster, pulling the trigger. She ran a mill! 
Dad Mega Sword got back to his feet. Then an aquamarine blast shot out from his eyes, flying back around it and spinning and flashing into the bay behind it. Satori Lightless char sword charging towards the robot with his claws bared. Just before it came close, a giant aquamarine turtle shell came sailing out of the bay, spinning in the air before slamming into the monster's jaw. I sent the lightless tumbling back before landing on the beast. Turtle's head and flippers popping out of the holes out of his shell. Ugh. A turtle? Tar Stark stammered, dumbfounded. A turtle? <laughs> well, we've had one before, but that was an ox sword. Then again, I'm not one to complain. Tor was awesome. Another Gaia sword, Patrick suggested. I thought there was only five. Sweet source. The team heard Jarwa speak over the communicators. A seven battle and speak for use of the crystal. Remind me where to look. Along with the five Gaia swords partnered to each of the Gaias. There were also auxiliary swords that either the Gaia and Mega Sword were never needed. The book also suggests they could form weapons for the Mega Sword. Sounds awesome! Let's try it out! You got it! Valen said with a grin. Turtle Sword, attack! The Turtle Sword clucked, leaping over into Mega Sword. It did fold it uh, over his head, flippers back into his shell before unfolding into a grip on the underside. The guy in Mega Sword caught it as it came down, holding the grip of his left arm. Guy in Mega Sword, Turtle Shield! Oh, the Ultra Sword's gonna look awesome! The Satori Lightless got back to his feet, hailing at the Mega Sword before leaping up to drop kick it. Only for it to connect with the shield. But the Ashley managed to knock it backward. The monster got back up, firing laces from his eyes. But they were reflected with ease, blasting all over its body. Wow, this shield's got some serious power to it. Thor commented, Let's pull our power to it and fizz this! Turtle Typhoon! The five yelled. The guy in Megasaur tossing the turtle shell up into the air before throwing a roundhouse kick. On finding his sword's head, he even wired an ice into the shield that made a contact. The shield flew towards the lightless, spinning hard and fast like a high-powered buzzsaw, creating a whirlpool with chunks of ice inside it. The massive attack slanted to the monster, dropping inside the whirlpool as the turtle shield and ice chunks wiped and pounded against it until it exploded into a mass of black smog, evaporating it as with the whirlpool, a shield flew back into the Megasaur's hand. Oh my god. It's... a turtle. That attacks by spinning around in a circle really, really, really fast. <sighs> Gamera is really neat. Gamera is full of meat. We all really love Gamera. I apologize. I'll go back and think about that joke why I just said. Sorry, Walker, Nikki called. But it takes more than a giant monkey demon to beat the Power Rangers! Fucker roared in sheer rage, shoving down a bookcase in his darkest hideout. The glass beakers had taunted and shattered as they hit the ground, the chemicals inside just spilling out onto the floor. Walker then swung his staff, shattering the glass door to the top shelf of the cabinet, holding the lightless figures, causing a pair to tumble to the ground. He was about to smash them apart for his staff, only for his sister to block over a sword. That's enough, Walker! Darkia said, Must you want to reduce our forces against the Rangers? Walker grunted, backing off. What good does it do us to have the light so they can't beat the Rangers? They've thrown, I've thrown the best I've got at them and they keep on winning! So we'll keep on doing something different, Darkia argued. We will destroy the Rangers and... Darkia stopped as a loud gargling on the ground distracted the two. Looking down, they watched the chemicals from the beaker spread out to the figurines on the floor. Fingerings melted into the chemicals, creating a thick, venomous looking goo. I started to form in a hand that reached out towards them. That isn't good. Melanie shuffled her feet a little, making her way to Nikki, dance in the clearing outside the ancient library. As usual, Nikki was practicing her moves, wearing a new red karate key that she had Zara rip up for her. Gulping a little, Melanie finally worked up the nerve to clear her throat, getting the Red Ranger's attention. Oh, hey, Madeline. What's up? I, uh, just wanted to come out here, and, um... Alan muttered, rubbing her arm. And? Nikki asked. 
Ella gave her head a quick shake before finally saying, I just wanted to apologize. Nikki blinked in surprise. You will apologize to me. Does it really surprise you that much? Madeline inquired. Yes, I want to apologize for thinking you were trying to diss me before. Look, the truth is, I don't really think things through all the way. Yeah, kind of knows that, Nikki noted. Well, smile, she saw that she was half joking. So, I didn't really think about why you put me on Team 1 before. Now I continue. The truth is, I do know this isn't the crystallography club back at college. I'm not stupid, most of the time anyway. I was so used to being in charge, though, and you being the leader. Again, yeah, I never asked to be the leader, Nikki brought up. That's because you didn't have to, Mallory Karen. You were just automatically a better leader than me. And it hasn't been easy to accept that I'm at best just a runner up to you. So I guess I just thought you were trying to sabotage me or something. Nikki's jaw dropped, looking a bit hurt, causing Mallory to sigh and turn away. This is so stupid. I don't know why I would ever suspect you of something like that. Nikki shrugged. Well, maybe because we don't really know each other that well yet? I'm still a newcomer to the group, and really, I guess I get the rest. I mean, who really wants to be sick at best in anything? Yeah. Valen muttered before a light bulb went on her head. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I won't be sick at best anymore. Excuse me? Nikki asked, confused. I can't be the best leader on the team. I'll be the best me on the team. Mallory explained, spinning around to face Nikki. Whenever you need someone to be crazy as Farag, I'm the one to call on! Nikki giggled, patting Mallory on the shoulder. Well, save your butts today. But I guess, you know, you could use the discipline in other areas. Maybe some karate could help you out? Good idea! Mallory said, I'll get Joe Ward to make me a Nikki right away! Ooh, I'm using boxy claws! Nikki rolled her eyes as Mallory charged off, heading back into the ancient library. You know... If the rest of us could tap into even a little bit of air energy that this girl has, even just 10%, Walker and Darkia wouldn't stand a chance. Uh, what was in those beakers? Darkia asked, backing away. An experimental toxin made from blot mist and heated with dark flames. Walker explained, likewise, keeping his distance as the chemicals expanded, the hand growing in an arm. And what's like this did it does assimilate? Darkia inquired, keeping her sword pointing to the hand. This is another sprung out for the group. That would be the Sphinx and Madness Lightless. Walker answered as the head came forth, resembling a Sphinx, possessing large insect eyes, mouth parts, and a ten eye. Large sight sprouted out of the forearms, and the hands grew sharp claws, and let out a terrible screeching sounds that grew over the ground, its body forming. Darkie stood side by side with her brother, horrified at the figure. Walker? I think we really did it this time. I'm going to keep a short one because I've got some reasons. But I, I just think this proves another part of why Starfleet fails. No eternal conflict. Look, say what you will about the original series, but even it had its moments where Jason and Tommy argued. There, they butted heads. In a lot of Sentai, there are moments where the teams have had problems. They conflicted, they argued, they fought. Conflict is a part of life. You need that to help establish things. Granted, too much of it, you wonder why they're friends or teammates to begin with. But having too little of it, and it starts to look suspicious. It becomes, for want of a better word, too clean, too happy. And... It ends up making Rangers, changing Rangers from being this really cool show to being what some parodies actually think it is. And it removes all the fun from it. Still, one down, thousands more to go. I'll see you all next time.